Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs, and today I have a special guest. Please say hello to Alani. Hi. Alani has agreed to assist me making some good old fashioned pot holders, just like we made when we were kids. Now this will be the first of many Crafts for Kids videos we're gonna upload to this channel. So stay tuned and you may see this pretty face in many more of the future videos. Now there are many loops and looms on the market today. Before we start weaving, Alani and I thought we'd give you a quick review of four purchases we've made recently that might help you make some purchases yourself. So we're gonna start right away with review number one. So our first review is in our opinion, the. The, the best starter kit. And in fact, this is the kit that we started all of our grandkids on and they have been making pot holders ever since. This kit is called Loopers and Looms. It's put out by a company called Pepperell Braiding Company. It comes with six of these wonderful seven inch by seven inch looms. It comes with six of these me wonderful metal hooks and it comes with enough loop loops to make six pot holders. We think it's like the perfect kit because you could gather the girlfriends or the, the neighborhood kids or all your grandchildren and you could sit around and learn how to make these wonderful pot holders and everybody would be hooked on it. So it's a, in our opinion, it's a wonderful starter kit, right? Mm -hmm. Now I paid $22 for this. I will say that when you're searching for loops to make your pot holders, always look for 100% cotton. These are not 100% cotton. These are cotton polyester. So be careful of these when you're using them as true pot holders, if they've got any polyester, they, because if it's hot enough, they can burn. So that's something to keep in mind. We also had to modify the hooks. Although we like these hooks a lot, we felt that this tip, which is originally about an inch long, was too long to make the turn on the loom, right? Mm -hmm. We had some issues with it. A simple metal cutter and clip that off to about a quarter of an inch will make these the perfect size hooks to use on all your pot holders. So a simple fix on that, right? All in all, we um, were able to make eight plus pot holders with this kit. So Lonnie and I are gonna give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Do you think um, this is a good investment? Yes. A thumbs I up? I agree, a thumbs up. Okay, so now moving on to our review number two. Our second review is a bag of loops that I recently picked up at Hobby Lobby. This was $8.99. I thought it was a really, really good deal. This is enough to make eight pot holders. Um, these are cotton blend loops. So again, you're always gonna be wanting to look for 100% cotton, but they're not as easy to find. The problem that I found with these is that we had a lot of, of irregulars. They, the loops were either too small, but there was no way that they were gonna stretch across our loom, or there was a lot of weak ones, which if we did stretch them across, likely they would tear right about here. We found a lot of these that we had to throw away, right, Alani? Yes. So that was had to be taken in consideration. Now, for $8.99, obviously that's a pretty good deal, but they are cotton blend, a lot of irregulars. We had to throw away a lot of them. So overall, what would you give this one? I would probably give it a thumbs down. I would give it a thumbs down as well. So we agree on that one as well. Good job. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do a third review. All right, so are you ready for our third review? Are you ready? Yes. Yes, because we like this one, don't we? Our third uh, review is this wonderful bag of loops that we picked up on Amazon. Uh, it is um, put out by a company called Pepperell Braiding Company. We like this company because they put out a lot of quality goods, don't they? Yes. Um, in it was 192 loops. We got it for $10.99. The loops, as you can see, are absolutely stunningly beautiful. And we made some absolutely beautiful pot holders out of this. But again, these are not ones that you're gonna to wanna to use to pull out something really hot from the oven. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to use these as trivets, maybe some put under your plants or whatever. But they're beautiful. Because they are 100% polyester, however, you're gonna have some shrinkage. So these are gonna be considerably smaller than the, the loops that are 100% cotton or cotton poly. However, they make some beautiful, beautiful uh, trivets, and we highly recommend these. So anyway, overall, thumbs up or thumbs down on this one? I give it a thumbs up. Me too, thumbs up for me too, good job. Okay, okay. so we're ready for our fourth and final review. And um, this is a bag of 100% wool loops. So this is really, really special. Now I picked this up from a couple, company called Harrisville Designs. And if you can find anything that this company puts out, you're guaranteed good quality. And we think that these are the best. Now you are gonna pay a little bit more for these because they are 100% wool. I paid $19.85 for this. 
Um, they, again, 100% wool. There was absolutely no irregulars. That means they were all the perfect size. They were, there was no, none that were weak uh, so that we couldn't use them. Beautiful colors. And this bag is enough to make eight pot holders. So overall, what do you think, what do you give this one? A double thumbs up. Double thumbs up. Well, then me too. Okay. We like this one so much, in fact, that we're going to use this for the demonstration today. And in fact, we're going to get started weaving right now. Okay, so Alani is ready to demonstrate to us the weaving uh, that we're for, of our pot holders, and she's already laid out her wonderful loops, and she's ready to show us all that she's able to do with this little seven by seven inch <laughs> loop, right? Yes. Okay, so she's laid out seven different colors of loops, and again, these are ones that we highly recommend because they're 100% cotton, and why don't you show them how you get started on your loom? Okay. She's gonna take that first loop and she's gonna spread it across from prong to prong, lining up the first prong on each side. Move on to the second one. You can tell she's done this a few times. She's got a pretty pink one. You can see, I don't know if you can see the quality of these loops, but these are the ones that we really like from Harrisville. Good quality loops. Spread it all the way across from prong to prong and onto the green one. Doesn't take very long. There are 18 prongs on each side, so you're going to want to lay out 18 prongs to warp your loom. Then you're going to need 18 more to actually weave it, and one more to tie it off. So 37 loops is what you're going to need on each of these pot holders. This is going to be pretty long. Yes. You chose some good colors. She's nearing the end. She just has two more. You go fast. And what she's going to do now is turn her loom facing her, and she's going to start weaving through the loops that she just put on there. She's going to use the metal hook that came with the original kit, and she's going to pick up the first part of, the, of each of those loops. Going under the first half of each of those loops, under the purple one, that's a girl, there you go, under the next one, there's that green one she's going to pick up and put them all on her, on her hook, making sure that she doesn't miss any. All right. Once you get across, it doesn't really matter if your, your hook is at an angle like that because you can always adjust it. She's going to pick out the next color. It's going to be so pretty. And she's going to put it on the end of the hook. And then she's going to gently pull that hook through, weaving it underneath those loops. And you can see how it guides right through. And you can also tell she hooked it on the second prong. It doesn't matter which prong you hook it on. Because once you take the hook off and set it aside, you can adjust it to a different hook, a different prong, which is exactly what she's doing. You can use your fingers then to adjust it just a little bit, make sure those lines are nice and straight. And now she's going to feed through another one. As simple as that. Each time now, you're going to want to hook the one that is down, down below the others. So now she's going to be picking up the second orange one and the second yellow. And these are so much easier to see now using that wonderful metal hook that came with our original kit. You can see why we like this so much. We've experimented with lots of different tools, different sizes of crochet hooks, and we came back to these that came with our original kit every time. All it needed was just a little bit of an adjustment that we used our metal clippers to do. She's picking up the one that's on the bottom, making sure that she doesn't miss any along the way. And one more. She's going to all the way to the cross. There you go. She's going to pick out the next loop, hook it on the end of that metal hook, turn it just slightly, and guide it through underneath all those loops. Doesn't matter at this point which prong it's on. It just slides right through. She hooks it on one of the prongs. And once she removes the hook, then she can adjust which prong she wants those to lay on. Adjust it with your fingers. Looks good. 
and we're ready to go again. You are the expert, you know that, right? Yes. They have a little bit of practice, right? Always pick up the one that's underneath. You can use both hands to pick it up if you need to. That's a girl. You can use both hands. That way you're... There you go. Good job. Excellent. I'm proud of you, Alani. Look at you. All right, reach the other side. You're gonna pick that up, decide which is next. I'm guessing it's the pink one. Slip it on through. Make sure it's hooked onto that prong, don't let it fall off, that's a girl. Hook it onto a prong on this other side. Remove your hook. You got it, good job. Sometimes it falls off, but you can always catch them. And because these are such wonderful loops from Harrisville uh, Design, they, you don't have to worry about inconsistencies. They're all just the perfect length. They're perfect, wonderful quality. And though these are pastels, they've, come, they've got all different colors as well. Let's do another one. She's almost to the other side. Yeah, sneak and feeling this one's going to be a purple one. How did I know? Slide that through. Those quarter inch uh, ends on these metal hooks works so much better than the one inch. You just almost can't make that turn with those long, but as soon as we clip those off, the kids had, it's so much easier for them and for me. Adjust it with your fingers. Now one tip that I would give you is that you can also use this metal hook to lay this on here to make sure that those lines are straight because you want to make sure that you always keep those lines nice and straight. Good job, Alani. I'm proud of you. Okay, I'm going to get started on another one. You're doing a great job. We're going to continue on. Looks like we just have two more rows to go. We're making fast work of this. Now, I will say that as you get towards the end of your loom, it's going to be a lot tighter because you've got a lot of pressure from all those loops that are on there. So be careful when you're doing this that you don't allow some of those loops to fall off your loom. It does take a little bit more time and a little bit more patience, but Alami's done this so many times that she's making it look easy. <laughs> That's her. You got it. You're almost to the finish line already, and you just started. Yep, she's using her other hand to assist, and that's perfectly okay. So you end it with that, so I'm guessing you're going to do another orange one there. Sometimes it does, doesn't it? Yeah, when you get down to the end, it gets a little bit harder to do this. I got a sneaking feeling you're going to figure it out. Very good. Make sure it's on your prong so it doesn't fall off while you're pulling there you go. All right, she's going to pull through this yellow one. Oh, it fell off. That's okay, just put it back on. You got it. There you go, you got it. Pick it on your prong, and you are. <laughs> Yay! You push them down a little bit. Good job. Can't Sometimes we use our hook then to push them down to make sure that the lines and rows are nice and straight. That's the way to do it. All right. So at this point, I'm going to trade places with Alani, and I am going to cast off this wonderful pot holder. Okay, so we're ready to cast off this wonderful pot holder that this pretty girl made. I cannot wait to see this off of the loom. 
This is the easy part, but Lonnie's never done this part, so I thought I would share this with you. So the way we do it, we're going to use a crochet hook. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert the tip of that crochet hook in the very first one, and then in the second one. And we're going to pull the second one through the first one and continue on, removing it from the prong. See, I've got two on my hook. Slide it through and move on to the next one. And they make little wonderful crochet stitches on the edge there. And I insert in the next one. Feed it through the loop that's already on my hook. And then the next one, it's as simple as this. And the more you take off, the less pressure there is on these. Here's the next one. Here's our next one on this next side. I'm gonna do this. Now what I'm gonna give you, can you give me one of those paper clips there? Let's go. We're going to use this to kind of, we're going to just put it in here like this and clip it on the side here just to kind of keep that pressure off the side as we're rounding this turn. You might do that too. Just open up a couple small paper clips and they work really well just to kind of keep that line right there. So as the pressure continues on these sides as we're casting off, that'll help maintain and ease some of that pressure. Insert it in the next loop two loops on my hook and feed off the other one. And Lonnie, which color do you think that we should use for our tie? Hmm. You pick out. Whatever you think is going to look prettiest on your... We should do the dark blue color. You know what? I knew you were going to say that. I was, going to, I was thinking the same thing. It's such a pretty color. Okay, and if you could maybe hand me another one of those paper clips. Insert. And just as soon as I do this one, what I like to do is try to use one of those little paper clips, stick it in one of these loops here, and then pin it to the side right there. And again, it kind of just keeps that from pulling back while you're, you're casting off. Insert it. This one actually fell off. We're going to put him back on. Use your fingers to hold down those stitches as you're casting off to make sure they don't pop off the prongs. On the third side, Alani, it's not going to be long. It's exciting, isn't it? Yes. And then we'll have one more too. That's right, one more side. And we have another paper clip that we can use, right? Yes. I like doing crafts with you, Alani. I love doing crafts. <laughs> I think I knew that. We have fun together, don't we? Yes. All right, now I'm making this turn, so guess what? We need a quick, yeah, we've got a golden one right here. Oh, it's a pretty golden one. Even better. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put it here. It just it just takes some of the pressure off as you're doing this. Make sure you use your fingers to hold those down so they don't pop off. There we go. It's a race. Our last lap to the finish line. And then one more. One more. Yay! And we're done. Oh, we've got just one little tiny step to do, and this is what makes it so pretty. I'm going to remove these paper clips. They helped us kind of maintain the pressure as we were casting off. Stretch it out and shape it just a little bit. And the last thing that we're going to do is what? Put the pretty bow on. we got to have that pretty bow. That's right. That's what makes it. All we're going to do is we're going to insert this one loop in that final loop there. Cross it over. Make a tie right there. Give it a nice tug. Stretch out your pot holder. And Lonnie, come here and get in the camera. What do you think? I give it a double thumbs up. I give it a double thumbs up too. This is beautiful. You did a great job. Yes. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed our presentation. I've enjoyed so much working with Lonnie, not only making the pot holders, but demonstrating it in this video today. And I hope I see her pretty face in a lot more videos. And I hope that you'll stay in touch because we have a lot of exciting uh, videos coming up on kids crafts, as well as twine weaving is the next. We're gonna be shooting that next Tuesday if all goes well. A whole bunch of videos on all my hints and tips on how to twine weave. So in the meantime, we hope you subscribe, 
We hope you stay in touch with our channel. Ask us any questions you want because we're always there for you. In the meantime, thanks for sharing this video with me, Alani. High five. And thank you for sharing our video with us as well.